Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on air pollution. All right, a little overview. The atmosphere has been a sink for waste disposal by humans ever since the use of fire. And that was approximately 1 million years ago. Um, if you were to ask a paleoanthropologist, they may give you a more precise estimate. But um, from what I've learned, uh, fire has been in use since Homo erectus, which was around uh, that time. So in terms of being a sink, it means that um, for a very long time, for at least a million years, we've been sending up at least something, you know, from burning fire, and then as time went on, more and more and more stuff uh, into the atmosphere, uh, directly because of human activity. And so people have recognized the presence of pollutants, natural and human caused, for a long time. Um, here's some examples. Leonardo da Vinci, in 1550 wrote about a blue haze he noticed and it actually was coming from uh, trees it's actually a product of um, uh, interaction between uv radiation um, with gases in the air and you end up getting um, uh, photochemical smog and it's actually the same process that results in the haze associated with the smoky mountains in the united states uh, acid rain has been known since the 17th century, and uh, in London, they knew about plant damage from pollution in the air since the 18th century. So uh, this isn't a recent problem. Humans have known about it for a long time. Um, actually, an interesting fact about, um, uh, you know, for a long time having air pollutants, um, there's actually evidence of uh, air pollution, indoor air pollution, affecting a Native American woman a very long time ago. And I'll tell you more about that later on in the lesson. So it's not just a modern day uh, problem. Two major categories for sources of air pollution. They're either stationary or they're mobile. So the stationary sources, we can divide those up into three types. There's the point sources. And the point sources are one point. We're talking something like uh, a smokestack. A smokestack is associated with a, a coal power plant, um, you know, any other power plant that's releasing gases into the air. That smokestack is at a single point. It's always in the same place, so we know that it's coming from that point. A fugitive source is also stationary. However, we're talking about wind blowing that even more. Um, so an open area where you have pollutants going in the air exposed to wind. And the way that I remember that is a fugitive would be somebody who, um, you know, has escaped the law. They've escaped and, and the lawman's trying to get them. Well, the fugitive source has escaped thanks to the wind. So that's the way you can remember it. And here's actually uh, footage from NASA over Greece. You have this uh, fire and you can see clearly uh, that smoke is going uh, hundreds of miles. Um, so that's a fugitive source. And then area sources. Um, we're talking about well-defined areas with um, several sources uh, of pollutants. So you can have uh, an urban area being an area source. You could have um, an agricultural region being an area source. And then of course, mobile sources would include car pollutants, uh, you know, a ship, a car, a plane, anything that's moving and releasing pollutants in the air, that would be a mobile source. And certainly um, when they're mobile, um, they're spreading that around to much more areas.